Prague has been nicknamed the City of a Thousand Spires for good reason. As you glance over its 1,100-year-old skyline, you'll be rewarded with splendid views of lovely domed churches and soaring old towers that combine to make Prague one of the world's architectural gems. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at the top 10 rated attractions and things to do in Prague. And just wait till you see the top two, something you may not even have thought of, so make sure you watch till the end. Now, before we begin, make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more awesome travel guides and make sure to hit the notification bell so that you know when we publish a new video. So now, let's cut to the chase. At 10, enjoy free art at the Municipal House. The Prague Municipal House is widely considered one of the finest examples of Art Nouveau in the city. Built in 1912, this splendid civic building is also home to one of Prague's most important and largest concert venues, Smetana Hall, and boasts numerous striking features from its sumptuous facade with a large mural on the arch above the second floor balcony to the large dome that rests behind and above the arch. The interior is equally impressive and includes many fine stained glass windows and important paintings. While English language guided tours are available, including a chance to see otherwise closed ceremonial rooms, one of the best ways to enjoy this landmark is to take in a concert or sample its cafe, restaurants and luxury boutique shops. Next up at 9, see world-class exhibitions at the National Gallery in Prague. Spread across some of the city's most important architectural landmarks, the National Gallery in Prague is home to some of Europe's most important art collections. The bulk of the collection is housed in the Veletsny Palace, a relatively modern structure built in 1925 that holds the 19th to 21st century works. While there's a strong emphasis on Czech artists, foreign artists such as Monet and Picasso are included, as are other art forms such as photography, fashion, applied arts and sculpture. Other notable works are held in the Kingsky Palace, home to an Asian art, art from the ancient world and the gallery's Baroque collections, and at the convent of St. Agnes of Bohemia, where you'll find European art from the Middle Ages. Finally, the splendid 17th century Sternberg Palace houses some of the gallery's most famous pieces, focusing on European art from the classical era to the end of the Baroque period and including important ancient Greek and Roman pieces. Hopefully not actual pieces. 14th to 16th century Italian masterpieces and 16th to 18th century works by artists such as El Greco, Goya, Rubens, Van Dyck, Rembrandt and Van Goyen. At 8, the Church of Our Lady before Tien. One of Prague's most recognizable buildings is the Church of Our Lady before Tien, often abbreviated to simply Tin Church. Well, you would, wouldn't you? Unmistakable for its twin 80-meter-tall spires flanking each side of the building, each supporting four smaller spires, its main entrance is through a narrow passage past the houses obscuring its facade. Although completed in the 15th century, the church was altered numerous times through the centuries as the city's allegiances changed, and while interior renovations are ongoing, there's still much worth seeing, including numerous fine tombs, the superb Gothic northern portal with its crucifixion sculpture, early Baroque altarpiece paintings dating from 1649, and one of Europe's finest 17th century pipe organs. Afterwards, be sure to explore the 11th century Ungelt courtyard behind the church with its many fine restaurants and cafes. Another splendid old church worth visiting is the Baroque Church of the Virgin Mary with its famous statue of the infant Jesus, said to have been responsible for miracles and still a point of pilgrimage. Next up at number 7, St. Vitus Cathedral. Situated within the grounds of Prague Castle, the Roman Catholic St. Vitus Cathedral is the Czech Republic's largest and most important Christian church. Seat of the Archbishop of Prague, it's also home to the tombs of numerous saints and three Bohemian kings. Founded on the site of a Romanesque rotunda built in 8925, the cathedral was started in 1344 and took more than 525 years to complete. Wow, sleeping on the job! resulting in a mix of modern Neo-Gothic and 14th-century Gothic styles, along with Baroque and Renaissance influences. 
be sure to keep an eye out for the impressive gargoyles adorning the exterior of the cathedral. Interior highlights include stunning stained glass windows depicting the Holy Trinity, a mosaic from 1370, the Last Judgment, and the St. Wenceslas Chapel with its spectacular jewel-encrusted altar with more than 1,300 precious stones. Also of note, although rarely displayed, are the Czech crown jewels. Shh, don't tell anyone. On average, they're exhibited just once every eight years. Be sure to make the climb up the cathedral's 97-metre main tower for splendid views over Prague. Might give that a miss. Visitors are also welcome to attend Cathedral Mass. Now at 6, stop by the Old Town Square and the Astronomical Clock. The historic centre of Prague, the Old Town, is where you'll find the splendid Old Town Square. Well, I suppose you would, wouldn't you? One of the best places to begin exploring the city. Here you'll find the Tin Church and the Clementinum, along with numerous other fine old churches, as well as splendid old architecture dating back as far as the 11th century, while the Jewish quarter, Josephov, is just a short walk north. A highlight is the Old Town Hall, home to the wonderful early 15th century astronomical clock. Each hour it springs to life as the twelve apostles and other figures appear and parade in procession across the clock face. Other Old Town Hall highlights are the Gothic doorway leading to its splendid interior with its art exhibits and displays, a chapel built in 1381 and, well, an old prison. Be sure to make the ascent, uh, not to the prison, by stairs or elevator to the top of the Old Town Hall Tower for its fine views over Prague. Phew, had me worried there for a moment. At 5, visit the Clementinum and the National Library. The Clementinum, one of the largest collections of historic buildings in Europe, is home to the National Library of the Czech Republic. These beautiful Baroque buildings were originally part of a Jesuit college and later came to house the Jesuit book collection as well as the collection from the Carolinum. The library eventually became the property of the state after the Jesuits were expelled and the Clementinum became a public library in 1782, shortly after being constituted as the National Library. With more than, guess what, six million books, the Clementinum's collection is huge and includes copies of every book published in the Czech Republic. A highlight is the exquisite Baroque Library Hall with its beautiful ceiling artwork, the 68-metre-tall astronomical tower with its spectacular views over Prague, and the splendid mirror chapel with its exquisite decor. English-language guided tours are available and last approximately 50 minutes. For a truly memorable experience, the Clementinum is also used as a venue for jazz events, classical concerts and festivals. And now at four, explore the treasures at the National Museum. Fresh from a seven-year-long renovation, the National Museum in Prague is spread across a number of locations and houses numerous important collections representing a variety of fields with literally millions of items covering mineralogy, zoology, anthropology and archaeology as well as the arts and music. The entomology collection alone numbers more than five million specimens. Hope you've got lots of time. The oldest museum in the Czech Republic, it was established in the early 1800s before moving to its current location in 1891. A particularly enjoyable highlight is the archaeology exhibit with its extensive collection of 1st and 2nd century Roman artefacts, along with numerous bronze and early Iron Age finds. Another museum to include on your must-visit list is the excellent National Technical Museum, which documents the many technological advances the country has contributed to, including displays of machinery and equipment built here over the years, from automobiles to aircraft. And now at 3, discover Wenceslas Square. A highlight of Prague's new town district, an area that grew out of the city's need to expand as it prospered, is the wonderful Wenceslas Square, home to the National Museum and numerous other architectural treasures. Named after the patron saint of Bohemia, whose statue can be seen here, Wenceslas Square was created in the 14th century during the reign of Charles IV as a horse market and has since become one of the city's most important public spaces, still used for demonstrations and celebrations alike. 
A visit today is a fun experience and undoubtedly one of the top free things to do in Prague. And we'll introduce visitors to some of the city's best dining and restaurant experiences, as well as great shopping. Great. If you are visiting Prague in December, it's also the site of the city's largest Christmas market. And now, next up at number two, stroll across Charles Bridge. One of the most recognizable old bridges in Europe, magnificent Charles Bridge boasts 32 unique points of interest along its 621 meter span. Built in 1357, the bridge has long been the subject of a great deal of superstition, including the builders having laid the initial bridge stone on the 9th of July at exactly 5.31 a.m. Nothing wrong in that, you might think. A precise set of numbers, 13579 believed to give the structure additional strength, if you say so. For added good measure, it was constructed in perfect alignment with the tomb of St. Vitus and the setting sun on the equinox. That's a bit more like it. The bridge is particularly famous for its many fine old statues. Among the most important are those of Holy Roman Emperor Charles IV and John of Nepomuk, the country's most revered saint, unveiled in 1683. A more recent superstition involves rubbing the placket at the base of the statue for the granting of a wish. Must remember that. Other highlights include spectacular views over the river Vltava and the structure's superb Gothic gates. Viewing Charles Bridge at night is also highly recommended. An added benefit are the smaller crowds, particularly after the spectacular sunset. And finally, at number one, walk the grounds of Prague Castle. Located in Prague's Hradkani neighborhood, Prague Castle, once the home of Bohemia's kings, is today the official residence of the Czech Republic's president and one of the city's most visited tourist attractions. Originally built as a walled fortress around AD 870, the castle has changed dramatically over the years and contains examples of most of the leading architectural styles of the last millennium. Within the castle walls are a number of Prague's most popular tourist sites, including St. Vitus Cathedral, St. George's Basilica, the Powder Tower, the Old Royal Palace and the Golden Lane. The largest castle complex in the world, this vast fortress requires considerable time to tour, but it's time well spent, apparently. Particularly rewarding are the excellent views over the Vltava River with the old town and its many beautiful spires in the background. Highlights include the old royal palace's main hall, the Vladislav Hall, so large it could be used for jousting tournaments, yes really, and staircases wide enough to allow mounted knights to use them. Mounted knights? You mean on a horse? Be sure to also spend time in the Royal Garden, dating back to 1534 and home to a number of superb old buildings, including the Ball Game Pavilion, the Royal Summer House with its singing fountain and the Lion's Court. Don't ask. The best way to fully explore the castle is on a Prague Castle walking tour, including admission tickets. Also check the castle's official website for news and updates regarding cultural events such as classical music concerts, lectures and workshops. One of the top things to do at night in Prague is to find a good spot from which to enjoy the castle illuminations that light this magnificent structure in a range of hues. In fact, basing yourself in a hotel in the vicinity of Prague Castle is a good idea, so you can experience the city highlights by day and by night. And there you have the top 10 rated attractions and things to do in Prague. Did you like what you saw? Let us know in the comments down below. Share this video with your friends and don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more fantastic travel guides. That's all for now. Until next time.